the Holy Spirit gave me a specific instru instruction to activate prayers and I'm prophesying this in this meeting so I'm just going to be doing an activation for all of you just to stir you up just to bring you up update your software praise the name of Jesus amen what I say update your spiritual software because many of you are running on that which is no longer being supported right we want to give you the Holy Ghost 12.0 praise the name of Jesus hallelujah how many people know that your banker will not have your work there was a time I was trying to do a bank transaction and I did a lot and I did a lot and it wasn't gonna work and I didn't work and I didn't know anything about what was the problem so I had to go to the banking hall left my house and drove to the banking hall bond fuel at six around something there only for me to get to the bank and the bank said to me what you should have done sir we are sorry it's just you have updated the app I said you mean I drove all this way just to have to learn about the need for me to update the app from that moment even if there's no updates I will go and check and say is there any update if not, you'll be just doing kiti kiti kata 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 kata. Many of people, many people are doing kiti kiti kata 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 in the spirit. They are pursuing what is not what is not absent just because they're not having an update. So I'm trusting the Lord that this is what the Lord. I'm sure you understand that. Okay, you need to update that software, the Holy Spirit. There are new speaking force of the Spirit upon your life. There are new things that God is declaring over you that you want, he wants you to know. There are new thinking patterns that God is releasing in the heavenlies. Whether you are young, whether you are old, the only way you can cut across and be effective and relevant is if you keep updating yourself. Now, it is my job, all right, as the Holy Ghost software manager. I'm not the developer. Praise the Holy Ghost developed the software. How many people know this? You can't take the glory that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the one, is the, one, is the developer, right? I am just the database administrator. Praise the name of Jesus. And I have to do a good job of it. Lift your hands right now. Say, Father, activate me. Come on, somebody. Speak to the Lord yourself. Say, Father, activate me. Update my software. I know you understand what I'm talking about. You all use apps on your phone. Your software that your boy will tell you, update this. A new version has been released. Update. If you're going to get support, you have to update. If you're going to get heaven's support, you have to update. There are new speaking force. There are current speakings of the Holy Spirit. And God says, behold, I make all things new. That's what he does. He's always making all things new. And it's important for us to understand that if we are going to have an effective life, a very powerful life upon the earth, we have to track with the latest of this of the Spirit. So in the book of 1 Corinthians 14, the Apostle Paul was speaking to the, an amazing church of Corinth. And he says in verse 26, I'll read from verse 26 to verse 40. And this is the scripture uh, the, where Paul spoke about the administ administration uh, the administration of effective church life how to effectively run a life in the spirit in a local assembly that can bring joy to everyone now God's desire, God's intention is that in every meeting as you come into this meeting you leave this place with joy that is God's plan you can come in heavy hearted, you can come in buffeted on every side but by the time God it's done with every meeting like this. You should leave for home, leaping with joy, praising the Lord, having direction, getting instructed, being encouraged, getting strengthened, and being stirred up to go and make a difference. That is true church life. I know, I know we've changed to something else, all right? We've changed to a gossip center. We've changed it to a place where we just show off. But they really, really, it is not what it is. What the church is, is a place where everyone lives with joy. Especially because God is laying emphasis on the season of joy. He says, tell my people, teach my people, instruct my people in righteousness that I have brought your church and I brought my church into the day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And I've told you this before, the Feast of Tabernacles is symbolic of joy. It's symbolic of rejoicing. And so when God says, sound the alarm, sound the trumpet over my house and tell them this is the day of the Feast of Tabernacles. He's saying this is the day of festival. This is the day of joy. This is the day of rejoicing. This is the day of dancing. That's why you realize that we dance, we clap, we vuvuzela even sometimes, something like this. <laughs> Many of you don't understand. Say, maybe this pastor did not have a toy when he was young. So let me drive it in a little bit more. Whatever it is you say. Why? Because it's a season of festival. And as we declare this and we prophesy this and we announce and we pronounce this, 
God will begin to make sure as you prophesy this over yourself, over what you do, God will take the word from your mouth and walk on it. Why? Because there's a principle. God will not do anything on the earth except some human on earth gives him license to do it. God does not invade it. Like that's why your world is still messed up the way it is. Oh God, where's your face? God will not do anything in your economy, in your policy, in your whatever it is, except somebody on earth gives him license. Guess what the license is? Your prayer. That's why you pray. Prayer is an earthly license for divine intervention. So when you don't pray, you're you touching yourself because whatever it is you touch as agreeing on on earth, whatever it is you bind on earth will be what? Whatever it is you lose on earth will be what? So guess what happened? Bring it on the reverse. If you're not binding anything on earth, what's going to happen? Hey, come on, give me a feedback, right? If you're not losing anything on earth, what's going to happen? You get nothing. That's why you must bind and lose. It is the capacity, and I've been teaching about the personal power that God gave you as a human. It is the capacity that you have as a human to have dominion and power and to subdue things on the earth. That's why humans can take a few elements of iron and metal, pack it together, and speak some quote to it and cause it to fly 15,000 kilometers without touching base. It's called aeroplane. Even if you throw a little paper up, it's going to come down. And those guys subdued the principle of gravity, yes, by a higher law. It is the power. So that's the same way. You can cause things to float because God has given that power to do that. And now, that is what you are supposed to be doing as the church. Because that power was further restored through Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to say this. Anyone who is in Christ is sitting on a, on, a, on a powerful resource. Because everything is in Christ. Everything. is It was with the Father from the beginning. Proverbs says there was nothing that was made that was made outside of him. Hallelujah. And guess what gets even better? The scripture says now the one who has all the wisdom, the one who has been there, the one who has all the experience of life, now left the glory in heaven and tabernacled with men. Now the Lord God. John, John put it this way. He says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word dwelt among us. And we behold this glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this is what happened. So God's tabernacle is now resident inside you. So this is the day of revelation of the tabernacles. Anybody understand this? I, I'm just saying all this, all this English I've said to tell you that you are a powerhouse. I don't hear an amen. amen. Stop listening to the wrong narrative. And I'm going to speak a little bit right now to women. I want women to stop believing the wrong narratives. 1 Corinthians 14 was where I was son. So Paul says in verse 26, What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? What did he say? Brothers and sisters. Is that what Paul says? The church is not designed to be a men's ministry. There are a number of you women who are supposed to be the one preaching here right now, but because you refuse to step up, so pastor has to be there. A male pastor has to be there. Thank God for Pastor Fumi. She's going to spend some time to pursue on some of you. Praise the name of Jesus today. Amen. And stir you up. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm going to call some of you to prophesy. The young man in cap, I'm going to get you to prophesy today. In fact, you should come forward and come and say, sir, you won't escape by the door. Then come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Just jump forward. I like your cap. Come forward. Very quickly. Don't clap for him. He has not even done anything. Why are you clapping for him? You like, you like star too much. You get too starstruck. Yes, you look handsome. You're going to prophesy. Let's see whether you got the capacity of the spirit. And you do. So Paul says, brothers and sisters. Can sisters say yes? Paul went further and says, when you come together, I want you to read this with me. When you come together, when brothers and sisters come together, each of you, how many of you? The brothers, the sisters, they come, 
together if they like let the brother sit on one side sister sit on one side like i was like happened in india they told me in uh, in india we don't sit in your church we don't sit uh, i don't care whether you like to sit with sister or brother don't worry let us all be in one room praise the name of jesus in scripture says each of you has how many of you each see this thing that god is dealing with about the body of christ about the unity of the spirit about the one body it means serious business with it each of you has what a hymn a hymn is a song of praise some of you should be writing and saying i have a song worship him i have a song that's what you should be doing god gave me a song for somebody and you will release that song and somebody will just be slain under the holy spirit somebody will have encouragement through that song you have a song you have a hymn what did it say you have a word of instruction you have a revelation you have a tongue and i taught you this on last wednesday a tongue is a message and it says you have an interpretation i know many people did not understand what i was teaching when i was talking about the a lot of abuse of how we use tongues in church when you come into a corporate meeting like this okay you shouldn't be speaking in tongues all over us we should be able to share speak if you speak it's for spoken tongues you should interpret it right right and don't don't let us go and be figuring out no we shouldn't be we shouldn't leave the meeting and be figuring it out if you must speak in tongues you must also do what or else speak in intelligible words that we can all say amen to amen praise the lord imagine a worshiping coming and saying yeah, say, well, something is wrong here you may not be able to say what it is but you know something is wrong something is out of order all right there should be no out of order in the church let me go on so somebody has a hymn so let me let me say this mr kaufman you have a song in your spirit or you have a word something just something just struck you it may not be a song you may not be a singing person who is like unto thee O lord powerful who is like you among the gods among the gods among the gods of the earth there is none like you none like you isn't that powerful isn't that powerful now you can clap for him you want to go back to your seat or you want to stay there you stay here see he's getting better he's getting he's getting closer to the pulpit next is going to be preaching here <laughs> see this is god's plan when you come together brothers and sisters somebody has a word who is like unto you there might be someone who is doubting whether God is powerful God you are watching me like this nothing is happening in my life and then somebody blast and say who is like unto you in a powerful male voice who is like you among the gods and someone just got encouraged someone got just got stirred up just because someone gave a word and there is no way we will all come with a word, come with a song, come with a hymn, come with an instruction, come with a revelation, and somebody will go out of this place and go and commit suicide. It's never going to happen. Because the words of the worship team through the hymns they sang will get you, or a word of a cap bearing brother will get you. Praise the name of Jesus. Or a red lip sister's word will get you. Who, what sister is there? Let me, who has a red lipstick? Nobody. They're watching. They're watching their neighbor. Anybody with a red lipstick. And somebody saying, "Thank you, Father God Almighty." That I went to wear red lipstick today. This man will have been on my case. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for now you know that you hear the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and Paul says, when you release these ministries, he says everything must be done so that the church may be built up. There is too much tearing down in our society we get turned down we get washed down by our bosses at work we get washed down by society but when we come into the church that's the place where we get edified where we get built up what that means is you get strength everybody should believe in this place today strengthening that you came in here hallelujah and paul says if anyone speaks in a tongue, two or three should speak one at a time and someone must interpret. 
and he's telling, talking about giving a prophetic word, giving a word of encouragement, giving a word of comfort. That means that God did not design that this, this church that is only one person that will always be speaking. One person can moderate, he can facilitate, but God intends that some a couple of people, at least three, Paul says, uh, at least three, right? In the churches back in those days, but not even as many as we are today. We have our churches in thousands and thousands, and there's only one person who has a word from the Lord. That's why it's easy for one person to manipulate. Because anyway, is the only one who claims to be hearing from Gogo anyway. Right? You, can, you, you complain about it. Oh, we'll be manipulated. Oh, you're not bringing forth your power to be the church to strengthen the brethren. Hallelujah. Instead of leaving this church this morning, gossiping, just say, brother, just hold one person's hand and say, the Lord is with you. The Lord is strengthening you. Praise the name of Jesus. Right? Right? Check out your brother. Look at if he, if he looks down, I say, I don't know what you're going through, but God is your strength. How many people can do that? How many people would try to do that? To your sister and say, well, I know you, I don't know you. I've never met you. But it looks like I've seen you for the last couple of weeks in the church. You don't look too good all the time. I just want you to know whatever it is you're going through, I'll be praying for you. How many people know that is so, it's going to be so soothing? How many people know that? Yes, now that is how you build the body. That is how the corporate joy flows into the body. So Paul was dealing with this. He says when everybody comes together, there are at least three people who are bringing a prophetic word. And he says one at a time, and, one, and someone must pray. He says if there's no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Two or three prophets should speak. And the others should weigh carefully what they say. That means that in the church, you can have two or three prophetic believers. Right? We need to understand that. That every church will have at least three prophets. Hello, people. All right. Most time, what you have is 50 pastors, no prophetic voices. Right? It's good to have pastors in, in our churches, but pastors are not the only ascension gift released in the church. God gave some to be pastors, yes, and some to be teachers, yes. We need teachers, we need pastors, yes. They have their place. But we also need apostles, we need prophets, we need evangelists. How come it's only teachers and pastors that we are talking about? That's why we are not fully maximizing the strengthening and the building up that God intends for his church. Because we have numbed, we have silenced, we have killed the prophetic spirit over the church. So nobody's prophesying. And because nobody's prophesying... <clears throat> Everybody's just busy mending broken ones because that's what the work of a shepherd is. They just mend those who are broken. Right? And counseling them, pastoral counseling. But you can actually say people from pastoral counseling because they can see danger from afar and avert it if they're very prophetic. I mean, you don't understand what I'm talking about. You could be, God begins to give you prophetic dreams. God begins to say to you, don't go out now or don't go out yet because you can pick these things up. You don't have to be a casualty of an accident. All right? Then we begin to mend your broken bone when you can avert the danger ahead. You don't do the wrong job. You don't go to the wrong place because the Holy Ghost already told you. My wife will tell you the testimony. God told her, go and walk, go into a place. She went for an interview there. As she was sitting in the interview there, working with the Holy Ghost said to you, you will be taking this paper, don't walk there. Young, 20-something-year-old girl. If she went to walk where she, where the Holy Ghost, if she didn't hear the Holy Ghost, she wouldn't have met me. The best thing that happened to her after Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, give me a round of applause, everybody. So she picked up that. She went to she went for the interview. And as she sat in the lobby, she flipped through a paper. And the Holy Ghost said to her, You will have this interview. They will give you an offer. But you must not work in this place. As she sat reading through the paper, she saw an advert to another, another place. So clearly, God took her. God, I want to use contemporary word. How many people understand that? You, you don't understand. The Guru. God had to, had to take a gaze. God knows what's her heart. Her heart is as a young graduate. I need a job desperately. But she will never get the job of her purpose if God does not divert her 
to that first place because God knows that on such a so date that you will go there, Guardian will publish an advert for the right place where she's going to work. So the young lady, unaware, just followed the leading of the Holy Spirit, looking for a job, got into the place, got ready for the interview, flipped through a paper, saw the ad of another company, wrote it down, had the interview here, they said, we are employing you. She said, thank you, but she never showed up there. Went for the other place. When she got there, it was a, it was a most crazy place. But don't forget that she is under an open heaven. And I'm just going to trust the Holy Ghost to release someone here into the fullness of their purpose here. You need to understand that the realm of the Spirit works differently, people. Life is not what you see. Life is not what you think it is. As she got into this second, second place, she saw the people, young people, brilliant young people, boozing, smoking, shouting loud, nonsense guys who run some business. We don't even know what they are doing here. The only girl said to her, this is where you're going to work. Me, Ibano girl, well brought up, never smoked in my life. I, I even even smoke or drink. The Holy Ghost said, this is where you belong. No, no, God, you, you, cannot, you can't be serious, God. Take me somewhere else. God said, I, I brought you here. She got into the place. Got her biggest breakthrough in the place. And God shaped her whole life forever. She can never forget that. You see, you need an open heaven. You need to be a prophetic believer. Whether you are young, there are people here who are undergraduates. There are young people here who are trying to get married. You are looking for your husband. You are looking for a wife. You are trying to get your first job. You need to understand this that the Holy Ghost is real. And this thing we call the supernatural is what shapes everything. And she'll tell you, today, the rest is history. I can't tell you about my own experience. And every single person here should have an experience of the Holy Spirit. You get what I'm saying? What should I, what that should you should do? You should have an experience, an indelible experience of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have it, you are in the right place today. Because God will give you that encounter. I say God will give you that encounter today. I don't know how I got here, but it's a good place to be. So Paul says, when two or three prophets speak, the others should weigh carefully what they said. When they prophesied it with a way, they were mature. There is, a, there is ranking in the church. And that is why we come in as apostles and prophets. We, have, we are ranked, Right? And so we gauge what you say and then we, we can adjust, we can correct it and we can teach you how. That's the ranking, alright? Praise the name of Jesus, alright? Amen. Amen. Am I teaching good today? So it says, if a revelation comes now, it says when you are all in that atmosphere and there are some high ranking people in that, in that place, it says, if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, alright, that tells you something else. God can give you the biggest revelation, you don't have to shake your head. It's okay to sit down. Praise the name of Jesus. Right? Yes. All right. All the, I don't know where to go. All this, you must, if you must give a message, you have to shake. Right? You have to start up. You have to do some drama. That's okay, but give us a message. All right? What we are waiting for after the stuttering, after the shaking, after the drama is what? What is the Lord saying that can encourage me, that can strengthen me, and that can bring me comfort, right? And you can give prophecy by just sitting down. I'm just trying to say that, okay? The first speaker should stop, he says. If a revelation comes to someone, that means that it now says, you now cue, you cue the prophecy. But everybody's not talking. Hey, hey, ha, 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 ha. Oh. Take it easy. Why? The Bible says this. Are you here with me? Say the first because you stop. If somebody has a revelation and put it down them and say, I think God is saying something to me. The other person stops. Praise the Lord. That's why at the point I had to stop to allow him say something. To stir up the bubble of the spirit inside him. And he gave a small word. You may think it's a small word. It's a very powerful thing because he just gave a word of the Lord. Amen. Are you here with me? 
Paul now went further. He says, For you all can prophesy in tongue. I think that's verse 31. And that is very key to this conversation. What does he say? For you all can prophesy in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. You all can. Hold the hand of your neighbor. Look them in the eye and tell them, you can be a blessing to me. Tell them, you can be a blessing to me. Come on, tell them, you can encourage me. Come on, tell them, you can comfort me. You can give me a comfort, a word of comfort. As a matter of fact, the first thing you're supposed to do when you come into, when the ushers usher into a meeting, is you sit down, you're supposed to look at your person beside you and say, good morning. How are you? And sometimes, you're saying good morning and how are you will douse the tension that we're coming from with. It's just been God's voice. And we have to learn to be God's voice to build up the saints, to encourage, to instruct. People should learn from us. Praise the name of Jesus. And this has got nothing to do with age. Paul says, for you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. That means what you're saying is you can control your spirit. Right? You can hold it down. Someone say, I can hold it down. Yeah. The power of a prophetic person is how you can control your spirit and hold it down. Now Paul says, for God is not the God of the subword of peace in all the congregation of the Lord's people. Now, verse 34, verse 35, I'm going to do a bit of switch Hold on to verse 34, 35. Jump to verse 36 with me. From that verse 33. Jump to verse 36. It says, For Paul says, Or did the word of God originate with you? Or are you the only people it has reached? If anyone thinks they're a prophet or otherwise gifted by the Spirit, let them acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. And that with all these things I'm talking about, how to, how to flow in prophecy, revelation, and it says it's the lost command. He says, while wow, the Lord wants his church to run, he says this. But if anyone ignores this, they will themselves be ignored. This, therefore, my brothers and sisters, say it again. He said, What? Therefore, my brothers and my what? My brothers and come on, I want to hear the voice of the sisters. My brothers and in this church, every sister must have a voice. Every sister must speak. So I want to hear the voice of the sisters. Nigerian radio, radio stations, they have some, some stations now have two lines. A line for men to call in, a line for women to call in. And the line for the women never rings. Hardly ever rings. The society has killed the voice of women. The church must help women to find their voice back. So I want to hear the voice of women in this place. <laughs> That's not real women talking. Women don't talk without drama. I don't, I don't, I, I must say women who, who don't have drama. There, there is no way women can be talking and there's no drama. We're playing a game, my wife and I were playing a game and said, who has the most drama? Like, both of us agreed that it was her. Yeah, I mean, you cannot, you can't talk about women and women say, hi, hi, hello. No. So I wonder, I want women to say yes in a stylish way. I'm waiting for the women right now. That's a good one. I, I see two, I see three, I see four, I see five, I see six, I see seven, I see eight, I see nine, I see, I see ten, I see twelve, I see twelve, I see fifteen. There are false narratives and lies that Satan has told in the church over the centuries. I don't know the voice of the men must be heard. And that's not true. I deliberately left out the book of some, verse 34 and 35 because there's something I want to do with it. 
because men, chauvinistic male church, use it to silence the women. I want you to listen to me. All right. So Paul went further. He says, "But if anyone ignores it, they will be they will themselves be ignored." Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy. You should be very eager to do what. And do not forbid speaking in tongues. Yes, he said that. But don't forget the prophecy. So if you speak in tongues, you have to do what? Give interpretation. Right? Okay. Speaking in tongues is fantastic. It helps you to build your spirit, your, your connect with God. But if you must speak in tongues to give a message, you also must pray for interpretation. Or else you'll be a foreigner to the people listening to you. Right? Okay. But everything should be done decently and orderly. In an orderly way and that's where the issue of ranking comes. That word orderly means by rank. Right? That is who we are. We are ranked We are ranked members of the body of Christ. Apostles, prophets, teachers and that's what our job. Our job is to help, help make sure that other believers okay, can find their voice. Right? While we provide leadership and, 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 and mentoring and guidance to them. Praise the name of Jesus. It doesn't make us better than them. I want you to understand this. It doesn't make me superior than you. Right? I only have a ranking above you. Because in the kingdom of God, there must be order, just like in families. How many people know the reason why? Let me just let me touch on some very 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 sensitive things. How many people know the reason why God puts headship in families? The man is not better than the woman. I will say it again. The man, the male, is not better, is not superior to the female. The old narrative out there that men are more special, men are better, men are superior, is a false narrative that is demonic. It's not God. I will explain. In the beginning, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, don't go there. God says, I'll make man and woman in my image, out of my likeness. He says, and they will do all the things, subdue the earth, do whatever it is, and give them the blessing. The Bible says, and God, all of us, when it says, and God bless them. Because right in the male, the, the female existed. But the time for manifestation was not yet until God put him in a sleep, in a vision like sleep, and then God brought her out of him. And the Bible says, and God bless them both. You get what I'm saying? The same blessing. I want you to follow me and listen to this because this will free you and deliver you. So God called the two of them and blessed them both. Satan came, deceived the woman. So the woman was deceived, but the man rebelled. The reason why God put the thing on the man is because in that relationship, there is headship. The headship is not because the man was superior, but just like in the church, there must be order. And the word head means that which first appears and that can easily be grabbed. That's easy. That means of head. So it's responsibility. In the moment they failed and they fell out of the favor of God, then God pronounced a curse. The two curses. God said to the woman first, said, because you allowed the devil to deceive you and whatever it is, he says, you will bring forth in pain, brought the curse upon her. And he also said this. He says, your desire shall be for your husband. But what that word really means, many people don't understand it, in the original rendition is, you will seek to control your husband. So when you see women walk in high level control and manipulation, that is a woman who is under the curse. The woman in the original plan of God in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 was made with personal power to rule and have dominion just alongside our male counterpart. And their counterparts, that's what the Bible calls them, counterparts. And teaching this because there's a whole lot of mess that is damaging homes. 
marriages are falling apart couples in our churches are killing one another women are taking the children off the men and wrecking the heart of those men because those men themselves and that brings me to the second curse the curse is the man will now try to dominate the woman it's a curse when you dominate your wife or any woman at all, you are walking under the curse. Read my lips. Are you, are you getting this? Society teaches that. There are schools of thought that teach that the man is a lion. He's supposed to rule and everybody cowers. He's the man of the man. That's not, you will not find out in God's original purpose. Why am I saying this? Paul took time to explain this. He says there is neither Jews nor Greek. There is no slave or free. There is no male or female. People read meanings into scriptures because they are not sincere. So back to 1 Corinthians 14. So when Paul says, when you come together, brothers and sisters, prophesy, somewhere along the line people say well it can't be meaning that but honestly he meant that people say Paul could be meaning that because in that first Corinthians 14 verse 34 and 35 it's the same Paul that said women should remain silent in the churches right right and they said they are not allowed to speak but women must be in submission as the Lord says, if they want to inquire about anything, they should ask their own husbands at home. For it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. That's what it's now, let me explain to you what is happening here. There's a whole lot of conversations around this scripture. That's why I first of all read for you verse 33 and I jumped to verse 36. Because when you read verse 33 and jump to verse 36, that it makes a lot of complete sense. Bible class said there is a lot of controversy on this because it does not agree it does not sound exactly like how Paul normally writes what does Paul write? 1 Corinthians 11 look at what Paul says 1 Corinthians 11 4 and 5 anybody here with me this morning? we cannot even engender the unity of the spirit if we don't mend the unity between the male and the female first of all there is too much war there is too much gender war the male and women in our churches are at war. Male and female are at war at home. Male and female are at war. So the world puts a ceiling. They call it a glass ceiling on the women. How can you say you put a ceiling on a human being made in the image and likeness of God? They say you have a demon. Right? And both of them are different. The male was created to be the one who will produce the seed to be transgenerational. That's his job. That's why you have a sperm. The woman was created to be the one with the womb who will carry the seed and produce it and nurture it so that it can see the end of times. The purposes are different. The man can't drop his seed on the road. He has to drop the seed in a womb. The womb will never get any seed to fertilize except there is a semen from some male. Both of them are collaborative and complementary. All right. This is the capstone chart, okay? I don't care what you came with. In this. I know I'm tearing your theology apart and I'm not really. I'm just teaching you what the word of God says, right? I'm telling you it's the wrong theology you've been running with, wrong narratives. It's, that's no foundation in the scriptures. What the scripture teaches is the male is a seed bearer and the female the word female is the word ish which means the one who is pierced that's why the first sex you have and I'm, if you have gone into sexual escapades you need to repent the first sex you are supposed to have the person who is supposed to pierce your eye man is your male man that is the woman it's called ish the one that is pierced Okay, that's too much, huh? Yeah? 
So how did we get to talk about prophesying? So Paul says, when you come into the local assembly, you have to rediscover the purpose of the male and the female. The non is superior, and that they are brothers and sisters, and every single one of them must be able to bring a word. So Paul has an answer in the book of 1 Corinthians 11, verse 4 and 5. That's where I was going before I closed this meeting. And he said, every man who prophesies, read worship. Right. So Paul is, so that word, word pray, praise, is actually meant to, to make supplication or to give worship. And that really is what prayer is. Your prayer is worship, is supplication. And it says this, or prophesize, that means to foretell, right? That means you're, you're predictive. You say, God is saying this, this is what's going to happen. And it says this, with his head covered, it's not his head. The head of that male is Christ, okay? And it says, but every man who prays, worships, or prophesies with a head, uncovers his own head. You know, people focus on the wrong thing all the time. What this scripture was focusing on is how men prophesy and pray. The focus of this scripture is not on head gear or shaving your hair. The focus of this scripture is that men ought to prophesy and pray. And also women ought to pray and prophesy. So right in the first Corinthians 11, the same church, Paul says what the male can do and the female can do. Now, let me appeal a little bit to your sense of reasoning. How do you prophesy? How do you pray? Anybody? Any, any, any male, female, anybody? Well, how will you prophesy? If, if I say prophesy, what will you do? Okay, I told this man, I said prophesy. What did he do? How did he do it? He used voice. We had this powerful male voice. The Lord said. All right, if a woman will prophesy, what will she do? Who is like unto you? Jesus. Jesus. Right? She'll use voice. If a man wants to pray, what will he, how will he do it? We use words. If a woman wants to pray, what, how will she do it? She will use words. How does that validate women are to be silent in churches? What made the day of Pentecost very powerful was something that I captured. It was, it was a statement by a great man, William Seaman. This is, and this is what he said. Listen to this. He says, before Pentecost, the woman could only go into the court of women. I mentioned there are different courts in the, in the tabernacle. Court of women, court of Gentiles. How many people remember I said something like that? Oh, okay. You need to crack this. In the, I'm, I'm running a syllabus on you guys. If you miss out one, you may not miss, you may not understand the other things I'm speaking. I'm speaking. So he says, before Pentecost, the woman could only go into the court of the women and not into the inner court. But when our Lord poured out Pentecost, he brought all those faithful women with the other disciples into the upper room and God baptized them in the same room and it made no difference. Is that the narrative of Pentecost day? The Holy Ghost fell on all of them and it concludes, it says, all the women received the anointing oil of the Holy Ghost and were able to preach the same as men. They both were co-workers in the Garden of Eden. And both of them fell into sin. Now, both of them have come to, together and walk together in the gospel. That's why one of the most powerful things that you can have is to be doing stuff, for those of you who are married, with your spouse. One of the things that makes this church very powerful and impervious to paths of darkness is because we have two strong apostles over the house. And she's not a lower apostle. Praise the name of Jesus. How many people know that? If I, if many of you, okay, let, me, let me look at her side. Let me look at this word. Many of you actually don't tell me, but you really think that Pastor Fumi is a better apostle than myself. How many people? I've run into a conversation before where people say, young years back, people say, well, I thank God for Pastor Talk's life. I, they didn't know I was listening to the conversation. I just changed them. Say, I thank God for Pastor Talk's life. Well, God is using him. But you see, when Pastor Fumi ministers, 
in the church. That once a week, I look forward to, I buy the tape. We used to buy, we used to sell tapes in those days. So, Pastor Homie's tapes would sell. When she ministers in my own tape, I have to announce it. I, I had the tape, I pre three messages. Guys, let me tell you this. One of the greatest mistakes you can ever make in your life is to think that your wife is stupid, to think that your wife has no value, to think that your wife is inferior to you. That's why they can't wait to leave you and go and do their own thing. And if they can't leave you, they pray for you to die. They will wear black cloth when they are burying you. Two months after, they are opening their business that they had always wanted to do that you never allowed them to. It's very, it's very tough story, guys. Many women wish their husband dead. They wish some of them would be praying and say, Father, why can't arm robbers just come into the house? Bring out their gun and shoot my husband dead. At least it will not be that I'm the one that killed him. It's accidental discharge. I want the women to pray, to pray and say, Father, forgive this man. Where are the women? Rice women, let's pray for this man. Will you prophesy over this man and ask that God will just pray for mercy for them. Many, many men have missed it. They have wronged you. They have destroyed themselves thinking that they are destroying you. We pray for mercy for this man. These men have damaged themselves. They, didn't, they thought they are damaging women. The average husband has really, really caused a big damage to his life. If only he will understand. So I want the women to open your mouth. I want the ladies. I'm talking about women. Some guys are sitting down. Yeah, you know a woman? I want every woman standing. You have not discovered that you're a woman yet. You think you're like, they call, they call you girls. You're a small girl, have you? Say you're a small girl. You're not a small girl, who? You're a woman, who? Pray and say, Father, forgive this man. Forgive this man. Father, forgive this man. If you're married, say, Father, forgive my husband. He hurts me. Many of you need to cry a little bit because your husband really hurt you bad. Please ask for the mercy for them. Ask for the mercy of you. When you pray, God will hear women. When you pray, God will hear. When you intercede, God will hear. And we want women who are prophetic, women who are finding their spirit, my friend, their voice again. Many of you, some men have promised you marriage and they have left you in the lodge. They broke your heart. They took your money, took everything from you. They took your virginity. They took your money. They took your career. And they left you in the lodge. And jumped to go out with your best friend. And your heart curses them all the time. And if your heart continues to curse them, they will be cursed. They will be cursed. If you prophesy a curse on them, they will be cursed. People, many men don't know this. If your wife curses you, you will be cursed. The Bible says your prayers will be, will be in them. So you need your women to release you. So Father God, I'm a woman, pray with me. I'm not a woman. I'm a man. Pray for this man. Open your mouth wide, women, and pray for him. That's a prophetic thing. I first want you to do. Oh, Holy Spirit, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. Have mercy in your church. Have mercy on this man. Have mercy, Father. Have mercy, Holy Spirit. Lord Almighty, forgive. Lord, forgive. Lord, have mercy. Father, have mercy, Father. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Now lift your voice and pray for this man and say, Father, we pray for this man right now. Pray for the man and ask and say, Father, God, let your blessing rest on them. Some of you, your dad is your dad. Say, Father, let your blessing rest on him. Some of your fathers have their bodies replete with sicknesses because they are living in sin and unrighteousness. I want you to intercede for them right now. Some of them are your siblings, your male siblings. Father God Almighty, please help him. Come on, will you pray for them right now? I don't want women keeping quiet. I don't want women raising their voice like you do when you are chatting with your friends. I want to hear your voice in prayer. Women are very powerful prayer resource. That's who you are. We are prophetic people. We saw the Esthers, we saw the Deborahs, the woman of flames. Women are prophetic. We saw the Annas. They use these powerful words. Pray for your husband and say, Father God Almighty, bless him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, Pastor, we just come. Just pray for all these women right now. Just pray for all the women, prophesy over them in the name of the Lord. As the Holy Spirit will lead you. Stretch your hands towards her right now. Let's tell you up. Receive an impartation this morning. I want to pray and release a word of freedom for all the women. For every woman that has been bound by 
the complexity of traditions and the limitation the tradition puts on women. Today, we remove the lead in the name of Jesus. For everyone that has been stalled in their progress by the can't do, can't do voices that is in their inner man. Father, today we remove such voices in the name of Jesus. Because if the Son of God shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. So we free the women from oppression. Free the women from limitation. Free the women from inferiority complex. Free the women from thoughts of inadequacy. In the name of Jesus. We also free the women from laziness. We free the women from spirit of comparison. In the name of Jesus. We free women from the oppression of men. Either by their father, their boss, even their husbands. Father, we free them in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I release a grace for forgiveness. Because a lot of women are hurt and they are holding men in bitterness and unforgiveness. Father, Lord Almighty, I pray today that these women will free these men, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. If you're a woman here, just release any man that you have held in unforgiveness. Because they have hurt you, not because they want to, but because they themselves are ignorant. Lord Almighty, the grace to forgive, Father, we receive today in the name of Jesus. And we release this man. Now we speak concerning ourselves. It's time for us to soar. It's time for us to mount up with wings as eagles. It's time for us, Father God, to accomplish. It's time for us to conquer. It's time for us to begin to create, to begin to innovate, to begin to build. The things we could not do up until now, we begin to do them now. In the name of Jesus, we will conquer now. We will break through now. I begin to release in this house women yes, yes, that will yes, start yes, businesses. Yes. I can hear women yes. Women that will write books. I can hear yes, yes, women yes. Women that will take over cities. Yes, yes, yes. Women yes. that will be apostles. Amen. Women that will be evangelists. Amen. Women that will be prophets. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No longer shall you play second fiddle. Amen. You are able to do it. Amen. You can mount up with those wings. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every door shut against you, I open. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will get that business. Amen. You will get that loan. Amen. You will get that opportunity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And all the women shout a big amen. amen. I prophesy over the men, you will be able to equalize with the women. Amen. I break loose over you the spirit of oppression. Amen. You will no longer be oppressive. Amen. Because you cannot gain from the person you are oppressing. Amen. You will no longer be oppressive in Jesus' name. That was very powerful. Thank you, baby. Come on, right? Come here. There's something that the Holy Ghost asked me to do that I couldn't do because of time. And you just keyed into that right now. You spoke over the man. It was part of the thing the Holy Ghost. I mean, the Holy Ghost does these things. All right. The Holy Ghost gave me specific instruction. For, for the mothers to pray on the daughters, pastor for me to pray on the women, and then for the women to pray on the men. And that's a part that I've left out, and you just keep on that. I want to say this man before you, the Lord. I don't know what the Lord wants to do with him, but I just want to release a fresh anointing upon him. God is calling you as a prophet to the earth. And I'm deliberately setting you apart and setting you aside and setting you before everybody right now. God is giving you a rank in the body. You're in the midst of your brothers. But God is giving you ranking. You are going to be a ranked believer. Even right now from this moment, God is giving you ranking. Some of the things I'm telling you, you already know God has been speaking to you. Some of it you've been eavesdropping in the spirit realm. You've been hearing God clear, but now it's being clear. My job is to pronounce it. My God, make it clear so that you understand it. And so I set you apart into your office as a prophet. You're not even functioning in here. You don't even know what it means, it looks like. <laughs> but that's what we do. We hear the Lord. 
and we activate his people. So I activate you into your prophetic ministry. Seeing eyes, hearing ears. I activate you. I speak to your spirit. I open your spirit up. You are fully activated as a prophet of God. Fully activated. You begin to see things, dream dreams that are prophetic, hearing things, become more aware of the dynamics of the spirit realm. In it's going to be transgenerational. God's going to be picking people from your household and set them apart for the same thing. I don't know what the Lord's plan is, but as we hear him, we proclaim. So be that. Be God's voice. Be God's prophetic voice. And go forth. Did you enjoy the meeting today? Okay, Father, I pray for everyone here. Activate them now. As I break bread with you, they will be unveiling in your spirit. There will be an unveiling of your spirit. When Jesus died and rose from the grave, the scripture says, his disciples that encountered him on the road to Emeos were having a conversation about what had just happened a few days back about this Jesus that was crucified. In Jesus, the Bible says Jesus was traveling with them on the road. And when he got to a point, they decided to spend the night. And so he decided to spend the night with them in that, in that, in that place. In the Bible said they brought food, they brought meal, they brought bread. And as Jesus was about to, was reclining with them at food, just like we are about to recline right now, the scripture says, Jesus broke bread with them. In the moment that happened, the scripture says, they became aware of the dynamics of the spirit. The Bible says, they had a revelation. Their understanding was made alive. And I believe that that's what God's going to do as I break bread with you this morning in the name of Jesus. God's going to make your understanding come alive. This breaking of bread is going to be for revelation. It's going to be for revelation. It's going to be for prophetic activation. Is somebody, are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm really saying that clearly. It's going to be for activation. God's going to activate you into your graces. You're going to be able to hear the Lord and function fully in what God has called you to. Many of you are going to have clear core direction from this moment about what to do as you go to work tomorrow. About what to invest in and where to go. It will be very clear and unmistakable because the Lord is going to unveil your heart. It's going to, it's going to remove the veil from your spirit and drop the scale from your spirit eyes. Do we all have the element, please? Thank you, Holy Ghost. So, Father, I pray for everyone here today. Eyes that see, ears that hear, hearts that understand. That in the same way, when you broke bread, with the disciples in that evening and you unveiled them. You opened their spirit up and they understood the scripture. So Father, I pray for revelation knowledge as we break bread today. I pray for the blessing of insight for everyone in this meeting today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, break bread. Amen. Father, I declare that no more, no longer shall anyone here be blind like the bat. Everyone here shall have their eyes open. The eyes of the understanding is enlightened by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So receive in Jesus' name. And celebrate this grace. So Father, thank you for the spirit of revelation and for the spirit of instruction. Thank you for discernment. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Enjoy this. Make a prayer on it and say, Father, thank you for discernment of spirit. Thank you for a revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. Thank you for opening my eyes to understand the scriptures. Thank you for making me a more effective believer, child of God. I bless you. Give you the glory. In Jesus' name.